everybody? Welcome back to the J Team Brand Podcast. It's your host, Josh is out here with Douglas Element Real Estate. And I have a special guest here with me today. Mentee, friend, homie, somebody that I pretty much <laughs> watched grow up. Yeah, pretty much. Devere, Devere, welcome to the J Team Brand Thank Podcast. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Give a little bit about your background, you know, where you come from, yeah. and then obviously I'm gonna go into your, yeah, <laughs> into some of yeah. our stories, of course, but. Um, my name is Devere Newland, grew up right here in Mandrick, uh, Lower East Side born. Also grew up in Brooklyn, just graduated from, I was say high school, from <laughs> college, um, May 2019, University of Albany, con- um, grad, uh, congrat, grad, 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 there you go. <laughs> yeah, you UA, you know. Okay, that's what's up, man. So, listen, the reason why I brought you on to the podcast is because you're a young graduate, you know, you're coming into the finance field. Yeah. Um, you know, something that I try to push to the audience is a lot of financial literacy. Um, I think that's was the biggest pillar that a lot of families are missing yes. within, you know, whether it be their youth or even some of us as the OGs or, you know, dads yeah. and whatnot. Um, what we're missing to pass down from generation to generation in order to build that wealth and, you know, kind of close out that gap yeah. where everyone is talking about, like, you know, there's no middle class, there's going to be a, you know, poor class yeah. and, you know, there's going to be a rich class. And in a sense, you know, I'm excited to bring you on because you're young, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're out here, you're hustling. Um, you know, I'm super proud of you, bro. Like, Thank you. you know, at the end of the day, I watched you grow up. Me and your dad go uh, way back. He pretty yeah. much put me on to a lot of, like, I guess my hustle game. It's my my first job. Your your dad was my supervisor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, watching you grow up and, and getting into the finance field, it was it's exciting. And um, so I, I wanted you to share your experience in Albany, and you know, kind of fast forward into what you're doing now and how it all kind of you know fell into place for you in the finance field. So um, my mom's an accountant, and when I went to Albany, it's a huge accounting school. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna go get my Bachelor of Accountancy, get my Master's in Accountancy, kind yeah. of go that route. Um, but I knew myself, I was always inter- interested in finance, business, yeah. and like starting my own business eventually. About two years in, I'm doing okay. Didn't really excel in any way, shape, or form. Had a lot of friends, but that was as much as it got. Um, and then I actually started working for the career service office in my school met a lot of my future mentors um, and then also met a couple of friends who were from to basically upper middle class rich backgrounds and they was the first people to really show me like the real world of finance teach me about stocks getting me interested yeah. into real estate you know kind of planting that seed and in the same way as we're not taught financial literacy to the degree that we need to be taught yeah. to become basically get out the rat race and become rich, you yeah. know, however it is you take that. Financial freedom. Yeah, like financially free, free. Right? yeah, because yeah. At the end of the day, we're not all working for the dollars, we're working for the options that's behind exactly. the money. And the first person t- to teach me that were people who were born in a financially free household. Nice. So to them, it was more so, it was second nature but to know, to me, coming from yeah. where we come from, yeah, it's, man. you know, I had to retrain myself. It's yeah. not, you know. It's like unlearn and relearn. Yeah, it's like you're taught debt is always bad, but realistically it's not. If you have yeah. a debt for, you know, rental property, but you're it's an asset. renting it out as an asset, you're making yeah. money on it eventually. So it depends how you, it changed basically my point of view of finance in yeah. general. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. I, I I appreciate that, man, because, listen, at the end of the day, it is about, you know, kind of spreading that education and that knowledge behind it as well. You know what I mean? Like like you said, you know, you went to school for the business side of things. Yeah. By the way, you, you said you went to school for business. What business do you see yourself in? Is it the real um, estate business or is it? So there's, I've always wanted to see myself. Real estate has been, you actually was one of the first, probably the first person to really introduced me to real estate itself. Wow. Um, so real estate is one of the big ones. Also the fashion industry, I've always had interest in it. Yeah. Grew up in New York City. Yeah. It's kind of in my blood. Um, and then also nonprofits as in helping kids from my home, whether it's here, whether it's here in Louis Side or in Brooklyn, okay. to kind of get them out of that rat race, you know, to teach them financial literacy, you know, when they're 12, 13 years old, so they come up with that knowledge already embedded in them, um, yeah. you know, to get them from out of the hood and have a different mindset. So 
when they do eventually get to college that, you know, or if they maybe start to become business owners yep. or go to trade school, whatever route they go, that they're successful and are able to provide for their family once they get out. And also um, financial advisory, just because it's kind of the same way. I want to make sure families are financially literate, make sure that they have, you know, life insurance and everything is up. Yeah. So when they do, something to pass down. Pass, exactly, that's something to pass down for their kin and grandkids and so on. Nice, man. That's what's up, man. And it's exciting, man. It's exciting to see you going down that route, especially yeah. at a young age, man. Because, like I said, I'm 36 years old. I didn't... I guess I didn't get into the financial literacy part of my life until I was about 30 years old. <laughs> and I was a little bit in debt and I, you know, I kind of figured things out on my own the hard way, yeah. I guess you can say. Um, but so fast forward, you're in, what are you doing now? So right now, currently, I'm actually doing compliance. Um, basically, it falls on the property manager management with uh, first service residential, I guess they... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, to make sure. Yeah, so... <laughs> Doing compliance with first service residential right now, um, basically compliance is to it's basically the, what is taught to um, the law behind running all buildings, making sure all mm -hmm. buildings are legally able to live in, making sure that they have all of the proper um, accommodations, you know, like wheelchair accessible. Yeah. Make sure that elevators are all running. New York City laws. Yeah, all New York City laws. With property ownership. Yeah. Yeah. Even the worst stuff, like you can't have dogs, but you have a cat. Yeah. You know, no animals, but you can have a parrot. You know, those weird things that come in. And you, you've learned all this in how long you've been with uh, First Service? Uh, about two weeks. <laughs> yeah, because oh, we were talking yeah. in the backdrop, and I'm like, damn, you're dropping some knowledge for somebody that is just getting there for two weeks. So yeah. you're a quick learner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get you get thrown to first the first service is one of the <laughs> biggest um North American property management, so they kinda just like, here you go and just kept they throwing stuff. That's out, how like, that's how I like it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah throw it. Listen man, I think that's that basketball thing in us, right? Yeah, you just <laughs> you just know what? Make like, a yeah, move. I don't make know. A move. Gotta make it out there somehow, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. So so you're heavily into compliance now. Yes. Uh, what are your, some of your future, I guess, moves? What do you, where do you see yourself? Because I know um, you mentioned, you know, wanting to dabble in the real estate field, yeah. you know, wanting to learn the sales side of things. Where do you see that tool coming into play for the? For so the I have a lot of sales background. Um, when I was in college, in the fashion industry, and also in the car industry. Okay. Um, with rental cars. Oh, no and way. Thanks. So I kind of see myself getting into real estate, um, trying to own my own property and get into like the rental property game, but also maybe become a real estate agent myself and actually selling property as well. Yeah. Um, I do want to take a couple of years to get like into property management, and actually see the ins and outs, see the other side of it. Yeah. Um, but also I am planning on taking the SIE and Series Six exams for to be able to. Um, Come a financial advisor as well. Yeah, you had and mentioned that. On that route. That was the first. What is the SIE? I, I'm unfamiliar so with those. The situations. SIE is basically the pre Series Six exam. It was okay. recently stated October 22nd. I want to say 2018, probably the year before, but it's brand new. Okay. Um, they basically made it to like cut the people from getting into Series Six and getting it so easily. Easily in. Um, gotcha. But it's all it is is just the precursor to the series six and sixty six and all those. And that allows you to become a financial advisor. Yes, yes. Et cetera. Um, so like right now, I currently have my life insurance and health exam, so I'm legally able to sell life insurance yeah. and. I've taken that exam yeah. before. It's a tough exam, believe it or not, man. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you, you got to know all the insurances. It's. So it was. Yeah. That was my. That was my first introduction to finance or or. Uh, sales, I guess, yeah. um, when I was 18. I didn't take it too seriously, although I did um, help two people, you know, get life insurance, which yeah. they still hold to this day, which I'm kind of proud of, because, you know, at the time, at 18 years old, I guess I was just more in the, in, into the sales side of things. I didn't really understand yeah. the foundation of life insurance what? and, you know, like, I guess, the, the pillar that it's needed yeah. for, for some families. So. so what actually happened with that is my parents, um, I actually got a financial advisor right before I went to college. And I, it wasn't a route I was thinking about taking. It was just kind of like, oh, this is what, you know, this is what we're supposed to do. And life insurance actually helped pay for my first semester in college out of pocket. So wow. it was one that was the first, my first, like, real 
understanding, like, understanding experience with it and yeah. then that's what gave me the foundation like yeah the sales part aspect of it and yeah. but sales is part of everything that you do regardless of really doctor lawyer teacher you gotta sell yourself to the kids to make sure that they like yep. it. So it's up to your patience to make sure. I'm like, trying to sell myself you. now. <laughs> yeah, you know. So it was that foundation, and then also um, the sales part of me, which I've always just loved. Yeah. And bring that together, it made it made it like simple. Like, all right, why well, would I not go into yeah. you know something dealing with some type of insurance? It's gonna teach you, and not only that, but it's also gonna teach you marketing. Yeah. You know, marketing, branding, um, that whole nine. Yes. Yeah. It's literally going to go down the line. It's going to be like a slope for you because it's, it's you're, you're picking up so much knowledge and at the same time you're putting it into play. Yeah. And, excuse me. You're putting it into play and you're going to see the benefits of it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it, it's, it's all about the capital behind it. You know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do with the money and the options? Because I, I think at, at this point, I guess in, in, in the economy and in, so, in society, we, we've look down upon capitalism right now yeah and it's it's, it's gotten a really <laughs> bad name and I, I don't think people understand that capitalism can be used for good no you no know, yeah. like, hey if I'm a millionaire who wants to give back and open up you know these these education you know outlets and 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 you know bridge that gap then my capitalist you know, my capitalism is going to a good cause. Yeah. Of course you have bad capitalism, which hurts the environment and, you know, that the, kind the of stuff. The toxic billionaire stuff. I yeah. mean, nowadays it's... People have put capitalism almost on a pedestal. And then also socialism is like this horrible, never go there kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's yeah. like, um, it's not... Socialism, one, is economically speaking, it's like the best on paper, which obviously we know it's not when it's put into effect, but there are certain aspects of healthcare, you know, universal healthcare, being able to go to college and not have to worry about paying a trillion dollars just to get there. There are certain things that that helps with, but again, capitalism is has made this country as much stuff as we have bad that went on. Mm -hmm. It has allowed us to grow exponentially, it has allowed a lot of people to. You know, you hear the rice riches stories, yeah. and now more you know, than ever, now, especially yeah. with the internet and you know, think, platforms. You know, there's, there's, this is probably one of the easiest times to become financially free because mm -hmm. of speak on it. Internet, you know, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. My little, my little cousin. Mm -hmm. All these kids love that. You know, Snapchat. You have blogs who are literally from month one making zero dollars to month three making six figures and there's just so many opportunities that you know uber no uber doesn't own not one car not one nothing not, they don't not own a storage space not yeah <laughs> like this all they do is this is my sticker hey, you trust um, me yeah and go on i'll go about your business and i think once we kind of flip the switch um then you'll be able to see basically yeah. see the light this is actually a book I'm reading right now. I'm rich dad, poor dad. Mm. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because there's a couple books that I'm gonna mention yeah. for you that I would love for you to get into. Rich dad, poor dad is currently what I'm reading. Um, That's I'm, an awesome book. As a just want to get read it, start reading myself. But like the first ten pages, yeah. one of the most important things that I said is that one is the difference between poor and broke. Mm -hmm. Broke is just that you just don't have money at the moment. You know, mm -hmm. it's temporary. Poor is permanent, and poor is a mentality. Um, yeah, mentality, a mindset. So, no matter how much money, how successful you become, if you have a poor mindset, money's gonna always be that that thing. That you know, that difference maker for you. Yeah, it's like no matter how much money you get. That's why so many people, when they get a salary increase, they're still in debt, or if not even more debt, because they just don't know how to use it. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people are definitely, uh, I, and I do believe, in, and I'm a big Gary Vee fan, but yeah. I do believe <laughs> what he says, and a lot of people do go into debt and wanting to impress people. Yeah, you know, I, I see that. I see that especially in our neighborhoods. You know, like yeah. we, we've gone into debt for cars just to you know drive up the block and reality in New York City. You don't really need it. New Supreme. You know? man. Yeah, or it'd be sneakers or yeah. it'd be clothing. It, it'd be one escapism to another. You yeah. know, whether it be even weekend going out. You know. Yeah. If you're somebody that isn't financially stable and you're you're still spending things that you know you yourself can't afford, 
I mean, then you have a problem. Right? Exactly. So I think that's um, something that we have a problem with in, uh, within our culture and, and course, society yeah. in general, not just our culture, but in yeah. society in general. So I'm glad that you definitely touched on that. But there was a book that I wanted to mention to you. So uh, uh, it's Tony Robbins, and it's called Financial Freedom. I've um, heard about it. I haven't I think read it yet. Mar yeah. it's Financial Freedom Playbook, something like that. Uh, yeah. But look into it. Uh, it's a great book. I mean, I, I'm an audio dude. I, I'm not much of a reader. <laughs> I, I, like I soak this. in a lot of yeah. I, I soak in a lot of my stuff through like audio yeah. or visual. You know, I'm not really much of a reader or, or a book guy like reading wise. But um, Dude, that book will teach you everything from stocks to how to save to <laughs> just overall money management. And that's, again, that's something that we wanted to bring to the table yeah. today. So, man, I, I appreciate you coming today, bro. Like, oh, thank you, you know, the, the knowledge that you dropped today, man, I, I hope the audience takes this and, and runs with it, man. Because, yeah. you know, you're a young brother, you know, from the hood, you know, and, and at the same time, you're, you're doing good for yourself yeah. and your family. And, and you have all the tools, you know putting you in place to succeed in life, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm glad that you were able to tell your story and show other people like, yo, like, this is a route that we can all take, you exactly. know? It may not be the, the coolest route or the, nah, you know, the most sexy route, but, you know, long, long term play, you, you have a playbook, right? right? And I, I like that, man. I want to say, you know, especially my generation, the younger millennials, Absolutely. older Gen Z, however you want to with us. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, like, yeah. from one point it was 90, I don't know, but whatever you have a talent, music, drawing, you know, you're a writer, you can cook, you can bake, even though if you want to go the 9 to 5 route, do that, put that on, do that on the side as well. You want to grow your own experience and grow your own resume to, so you don't have to work a 9 to 5 because we know us millennials, we're lazy. <laughs> For the most, which, which we're lazy, think so. <laughs> but once you work on your craft and you do something that you're happy and you enjoy, it'll show. Go, it'll show, man. It's it's a go. It's an all the way go, man. Babe, before you go, I want everybody um, to follow you. So drop your, yep. you know, your Instagram tag, yeah. all that good stuff. Um. And, you know where they can follow you on any social media platforms and any future things. Yeah. I know you mentioned um, potentially starting I a blog. Be, and whatnot, yeah, we'll so. be starting a blog soon. Um, you can follow. I have two Instagrams. Okay. You can drop. follow me um, at d dot newland d e e dot n e w l i n and um, Devere Newland, D-V-A-I-R-E, N-E-W-L-I-N. Devere Newland will be, you'll be getting the blog updates. I'll probably will be awesome. changing it soon, trying to figure out a proper name and okay. to get the taste of it. Um, but that's really where you get my blog stuff. But yeah. What's the blog going to be about? Is it going to be finance, um, for your field, so be culture related? It's, I've realized that for kind of my generation, um, our parents, especially Latino, Afro-Latino, yep. Black, um, Basically, minorities, people of color, our families don't really have the financial literacy part. Yep. They don't have the know-how of, you know, writing a resume. You know, my mom could teach me a little bit. You know, my dad was kind of, my he, dad, he, he knew about, about basketball. Yeah. He knew, he told me how about, you know, how to be a man. Yeah, yeah. How, you know, be a good brother, but that's probably as far as that went. Yeah. Um, but I want to teach people resume writing, you know, cover letters, how to go to interview. How to network in college, you know, how to network when you get out of college, how to survive the post college and post college depression and making new friends, mm. financial literacy. I kind of want to get into all of those sectors because I feel like, especially as me being one post, post college right now, mm. to kind of go on that journey with me, but also to show y'all, yeah, like, learn from it. my mistakes. Yeah. I, could, I did it, you can do it too. Yeah, I took the arrows first. Like, yeah, and I, you know, I got the lane for you. Yeah, man, I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to look two, five, ten years from now and see where you're at. Bro. Yeah, you know, but we're gonna meet up there. Definitely, gonna, yeah, brother. Thank appreciate you, thank you, you appreciate, appreciate everything. And guys, love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to the JTB podcast. And as always, subscribe, comment. You guys been listening, I've been checking out the analytics. Um, I can't wait to the end of the year. I love to compare yeah. the two years. We did very well last year, so we're going to be looking forward to the analytics this year. And as always, man, I hope you, took guys, you guys took some value out of this and love you guys. Take care.